first video we went over uh, the basics of the receiver, the construction technique, and we listened to a few uh, stations with it. And uh, sounded pretty good. But we're going to throw some stones at the receiver this time. We're going to look at it a little more critically and we're going to try to uh, ferret out any uh, mistakes that might be in the book and we're going to possibly improve the performance of the receiver. Let's uh, work a little bit with the receiver so we can uh, hear how it operates a little more closely. So on the face of it it's a pretty sensitive receiver. We're picking up plenty of stations but notice how you hear that? That's a regeneration control. And notice how harshly it goes into regeneration. Now this regeneration problem becomes even worse at higher frequencies. I've now got a, uh, a coil installed that will get me up to the 80 meter band, around 3.5 megahertz. receiver is quite sensitive. If I go near the trimmers, it completely untunes. Go near anything on the other side, of course it's very sensitive. If I need to adjust the receiver, for instance if we have, have to adjust the trimmers, just touching it with the screwdriver very difficult. So the receiver is a little bit difficult to use. We've seen this schematic before, but let's take a little closer look at it. This does work as a regeneration control, but the problem is we also have DC flowing through the circuit, through the wiper of the potentiometer, and that causes something called wiper noise, and we're hearing that in the regeneration control. By simply making a connection from this point to the plate, we eliminate the majority of the DC going through the potentiometer. Now all of the DC will pass through the coil right to the plate. The other thing I notice with this control is that the value of the potentiometer is very high, much higher than any other circuit I've seen like this. So I think we're going to need to reduce the value of that potentiometer to make it more effective. Okay, in the redrawn schematic, notice that we have a potentiometer that's uh, correctly drawn, and it says 5K or 5,000 ohms. This capacitor in the correct range provides the smoothest regeneration control. So I've reduced that on purpose. Well, you might notice that magically we now have two Morgan receivers instead of one. There's the bottom of the receiver with the ground plate. Hope you can see that. And we've got lots of tacks nailing the ground plate down. And in the uh, improved receiver, we have several components that go right through to the ground plate and these include the main variable capacitor, uh, the ground fawn stock clip in the back, uh, the tube socket. Uh, these are very important points in the circuit, so why not go all the way and uh, put a metal plate on the front panel. The other obvious improvement is uh, notice the two trimmers are gone you can see the two trimmers in this one have been replaced by a knob. And let me tell you, that makes a very nice control compared to trying to use a screwdriver on the two trimmers. Uh, you may think I've gone completely crazy when I show you that I've uh, actually installed a socket in this receiver that will accept a shield. Notice the hand-wound choke has been replaced by a store-bought choke. So let's hook this thing up and see what this one sounds like compared to the original that we've been listening to up to now.
So now we have the improved Morgan receiver. And I've got a, a fairly weak station down at the bottom of the broadcast band. Look how nice that regeneration control is now. You can see how much more stable that is. Now I've changed the uh, the coil in the in the improved Morgan. Um, I've tuned into the 80 meter band. Now you might remember we were having real problems trying to tune in single sideband stations with the uh, with the original circuit. Um, this is still very difficult to tune because there is no uh, fine tuning control, no band spread. You have to be very careful. But now at least you can tune in some single sideband. That's the sound of an ionosounder, a device used to measure the height of the ionosphere. Fairly rare to hear one active, but the Morgan Regen picking it up quite nicely. Now notice the position of the regeneration control. What you would like to achieve is, is the regeneration to occur someplace between the 10 o'clock and the 2 o'clock position. If it's occurring sooner than that, it means you have too much feedback and you need to re reduce the number of turns on the tickler coil. If you've got to go all the way, it means that either you need to increase the turns on the tickler coil or you have too much coupling to your okay, antenna. Okay, so we've pretty much beaten the Morgan receiver to death uh, with this treatment. Uh, we reduced the value of the feedback capacitor from 0 0.0025 down to 250 to 330 picofarads, a lower value that allows regeneration to be much smoother. We've changed the regeneration pot circuit by shorting from the plate over to the open side of the pot. We've lowered the value of the pot from 500k or half a mag down to 5k. We've improved the trimmer that attaches to the antenna uh, from the screwdriver adjusted patters to a knob adjusted uh, 50 uh, puff capacitor. We've used shielding properly grounded on the bottom of the receiver and in the back of the front panel and made sure that the critical critical components such as the tube sockets, uh, the coil socket, the variable capacitor, the various adjustments, even the potentiometers, body, are all well grounded. Project like this is uh, very worthwhile for a young person, but it's also worthwhile for someone who is interested in working with the circuit and improving it and bringing it up to the standards of some of the best regenerative receivers that are out there.